the Added Time Podcast. Hello, welcome back to the Added Time Podcast. I hope you guys are well. Um, I'm Tears Combat, as usual. We've got the final one of our in-depth uh, teams episodes. Uh, last week, we put the poll to you on Twitter of who you'd want to see, Manchester United or Tottenham Hotspur. And uh, overwhelmingly, I think over 70% of you said you wanted Manchester United as your in-depth. Uh, we're filming this live from a, a wildlife reserve. Uh, thought we'd, we'd come outside and uh, just mix up for you guys. I'm joined, as ever, in the booth with James Ward. How are you? Um, fantastic. Thank you, Tears. You know, really feeling myself here at the Nature Reserve today. Um, quite brisk weather, so, you know, wrapped up warm for this. I um, hope you guys are well and enjoyed the last episode, you know, scrutinising Arsenal as per. Um, perhaps perhaps a bit more upbeat uh, episode today as um, I talk about my beloved Manchester United, as you all know. We're also joined by an under-the-weather Harry Martin. Well, guys, I regret to inform you, I am nursing a hangover. So the, my, my participation in this episode may be slightly subdued. It is quite fitting that we are at the Nature Reserve after starting last week's episode talking about zoo animals. And I just do need to say that the Penguin <laughs> won quite convincingly. 64% vote on that shootout with the Jaguar. So, uh, yeah, I guess that's good news for all Penguin fans out there. And I hope you enjoy the episode. I'm not too sure I'll be the most upbeat participant. But, uh, you know, I am dedicated, as you can tell. Yeah, I just want to say I'm really disappointed none of you voted uh, higher on the baby meerkat. That was quite disappointing. But yeah, we've had some good weeks. Uh, football is back in the flesh. I've actually made my way down to two non-league games recently. And uh, hopefully, uh, I think Brighton and Chelsea played in front of fans yesterday as we're recording this as well. So uh, it's good to see fans back in stadiums and hopefully they'll be back, if you're a Man United fan, to see your team soon. Let's get into Man United then. The transfer window so far has been fairly quiet for them. They've uh, got in Odi Nogalo again on loan, I think. And uh, they've sold uh, Chong and uh, Angel Gomez. Uh, Chong is alone and uh, Gomez was just released. And then they've also sold Alexis Sanchez. But other than that, the the story of the summer has been Jaden Sancho and whether they'll be able to get him in. Uh, it doesn't look like Man United are prepared to pay the 100 million and uh, they didn't reach the... The deadline that Dortmund set to uh, make the bid, so it looks like Sancho will stay unless Man United do stump up the money eventually. But uh, recently, there's been some transfer rumours that uh, Donny van der Beek is uh, in for a 45 million move to them. Uh, that would be interesting to see if that is a uh, fact or fiction. Uh, they've also been uh, linked with Grealish over the summer, but Aston Villa are saying they need at least 80 million for him, and if you don't reach that um, price tag, he's not going. So if they're not paying a hundred mil for Sancho, it doesn't look like they'll pay that for Grealish. Uh, but how do you rate Man United's transfer window so far, James? Do you think they needed to strengthen? Um, I mean, some might say based off the end of the season post lockdown that perhaps they didn't. You know, Bruno Fernandez came and stole the show towards <laughs> the end. Um, but yeah, they definitely need a little bit more depth. You know, the front three were firing on all cylinders, but they could really do with another centre mid. You know, can you imagine? Uh, Fernandez, Pogba, and, and Van der Beek um, midfield trio. That'd be fantastic, and uh, they could also definitely do with a new centre back. You know, the, the felon at the back now. Um, it, it's not looking promising for them. Um, no, no one wants that hanging over their heads, and and they do. Um, other than that, I mean, they look pretty strong. Uh, I'll be interested to see who plays in goal, though. You know, they've just they've just tied uh, Dean Henderson up to a big old contract. Um, so be interested to see who steals that that jersey for the new season, if you know what I mean. Uh, yeah, Man United did look good in the Premier League towards the end. Uh, what really um, kind of took the gloss off of that towards the end was their Europa League campaign. Uh, they lost two one to Seville in the semi finals, and overall in that game, you got to say Seville just looked like a more complete team than United. Uh, Man United may have the names, but Seville were just they, they were just a better team on that night, and I think it shows the the gaps in Manchester United uh, at the moment. Uh, Harry, what, what do you make of their Euro- Europa League campaign? Uh, can you read too much into that? Uh, I thought they were the better team, to be fair. They had about a zillion chances against Seville. They just took their chances. I think Man United are very wasteful. And I think that comes into debate of where they want to strengthen because uh, a lot of lot of fans, maybe some like Martial starting at striker, but personally for me, I think he is better on the left, cutting in on his right. 
I'm not sure he is a complete striker. You know, maybe selling Lukaku was a mistake, even though he didn't even win the Europa League. But I don't think you can read too much into it because it is just a cup competition at the end of the day and you can just get beaten and having an off night. I think the league, their league form was very impressive. Oh, I think they do need some depth because bringing like Jesse Lingard and that off the bench is... They're just not showing uh, much ambition in the transfer market, unlike Chelsea, who are actually making a lot of signings, who I think were there, they were on 11 pair of thing beforehand. And then now United haven't really made much progression or showed much ambition to win the league. And uh, yeah, that's my thoughts on that. Yeah, I think uh, for Man United this season, uh, my uh, doubts of them is uh, whether they're going to get as many penalties as they did last season. Of course, they scored 10 penalties last year. And if they don't get that luck again next season in terms of winning penalties, then uh, it's, it's going to be about who can fill up the goals. Of course, uh, Mason Greenwood was fantastic last season in his breakout year. He's going to get a full season now, James. He's had an England call-up. Uh, is the hype real with uh, Mason Greenwood? Um, I mean, it, there's definitely potential there. You know, he's probably one of the most clinical players I've ever seen play um, at, at that age. You know, he's fantastic. Uh, you look at players that are a similar age to him, you know, players like Rian Bruce who have had to go out uh, on loan to get their, their minutes in um, to then even probably not be given a chance at Liverpool, you know. I mean, there's a massive gateway for Greenwood here. Rashford's led the way um, for United players to step into that position. And I think Greenwood's the next in line, you know. I think he could be as good, if not better, than Marcus Rashford. And uh, in that front three, um, he, he looks formidable, doesn't he? Yeah, what a player. Yeah, I think uh, Solskjaer said he's the uh, most two-footed player that he's ever seen. And he's played with a lot of good players, if you think back to his United days. And, uh, of course, uh, it'll be interesting to see how he gets on this season and whether he can uh, make up for some of those penalty goals. Uh, but maybe they'll get the penalties anyway. Uh, a lot of talk around uh, Bruno Fernandes and Pogba uh, being instrumental for United this season. My um, humble opinion is that they can't really play in the same team, to be honest, because if you play Fernandes, it means you're playing with an 8 or a 10, and then Pogba has to play further back, which I think he really... If you're um, relying on Pogba to be one of your defensive midfielders, I, I just don't think that's his job. He's a fantastic player, but he's fantastic further up the pitch. Not not as a 10, but more as an 8. Um, and if you're playing him alongside, I think it's Fred that they have... Um, it's going to be a struggle for them. I really think it will. I don't think they can play in the same team. And that, that's not Ollie's fault. I mean, well, it kind of is if he's signed them all. But, uh, yeah, it's about fitting, fitting the right team. Uh, talking about Solskjaer, Harry, uh, a lot of people seem to compare Solskjaer, Lampard and Arteta as though the three managers who have played for their clubs and now are managers. Um, what, what, what do you make of Solskjaer in comparison to some of these other new managers on the scene, even though Solskjaer's been a manager for the best part of a decade. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly my point. Ten bloody years he's been a manager, so I don't even think they're really in the same same category, and I think it's unfair to suggest that they are. I think Arteta and Lampard are actually new managers. For me, he is bottom of the pile. I think Arteta's the best, but as he should be currently, after having tutoring of one of the greatest managers of all time, you would think and hope that he would be quite tactically well, well, like Naus and know what he's talking about tactically. And I think I think he is, to be fair. And also, for, on Bruno, he's on fraud watch. I don't know whether we bring this up, but he's on fraud watch for me. I think he is quite disappointing at times, and these penalties are just bail him out. So I think when they dry up, he could be in for a rough patch, and we'll, we'll have to see how he's going to handle it. Uh, yeah, finishing up on United, uh, let's look ahead to um, where they're going to finish this season. Uh, James, what are your ambitions? What do you think United's ambitions should be for this year? Do they need to just secure top four again? Should they be going for the title or do you think they're not going to make the top four at all? Um, I do think they're going to make the top four. I don't think they'll be challenging the top two, um, who in my opinion I don't think is going to be Liverpool or City. Well, Liverpool and City, I think it's going to be City and Chelsea. Um, but I think it'll be Liverpool and United, you know, scrapping for that that third spot, that third and fourth spot. And I think, you know, United might take the bacon on that one. They they look quality at the end of last season, um, barring the Europa League exit. But, you know, other than that, um, what is worrying is their, their sort of bottle job mentality at the moment. 
reaching what was it three three semi finals this season and winning none of them. Um, I think that'll be worrying. Uh, can they do it in the big games? That's the real question. Uh, beat Man City last season, but I mean, other than that, can't can't think of many other huge performances in big games by United. So you know, I'll be, I'll be worried about that if I was them. Yeah, I think the thing with United is it's a lot of good attacking players, but not great football for for the attacking talent that they have. I mean, a lot of the time they they do just get away with getting the lucky penalty, and uh, I don't actually have very high hopes in this season. I think they'll they'll barely make to the um the top four. I don't think they will. I mean, we'll get into our season predictions very soon this week. But, um, Harry, what do you think, Um, um, I think they will... I don't know. It's really hard to call because I think Arsenal looked really promising <coughs> last night in the Community Shields. And I don't really know. I think they... It's really hard to call the top five because I think any of the teams could come in any position. So, But I definitely think they'll be in the top five about where they are last year, and definitely with a few signings, like Van Der Beek, as mentioned previously, I definitely think they'll be there and thereabouts, because they do have an immense amount of quality, it's just the depth that they're lacking to compete with Liverpool and Man City, and sorry about that, Chelsea now, <laughs> in uh, the next season after a lot of signing. So yeah, that's what I think on Man United. Sorry guys, as I say, I'm, I'm feeling a bit ropey, but they are my thoughts on Man United even if I did mumble them all across your screens. <laughs> yeah, um, I hope you've enjoyed a slightly shorter in-depth episode today. Um, we're just trying to keep it short, of course. We've got some Under the Weather members, but we're going to finish up with just a little update of uh, the Added Time uh, channel and uh, media sensation that we are. Uh, we're going to be bringing out two podcasts uh, very soon after this one. We've got um, the Championship season predictions so we're going to be doing the the full 1 to 24 for the championship and we're going to be doing the full 1 to 20 for the premier league um we're going to put a poll on twitter after this comes out w- which one you want first i think we'll upload one on the friday one on the uh one on the monday before the season starts so yeah so just check out our twitter we'll do the poll exactly like we did with who you wanted uh the in-depth episode on today and uh also uh Keep an eye on the YouTube, of course, as football games are back. Uh, potentially some, some more vlogs for you guys. Um, thinking about starting an FA Cup uh, vlog series for this season. Maybe uh, checking out a game in each round all the way to uh, maybe fans being back in the final. Who knows? So, so just keep posted on the socials. Of course, anything you guys want to plug? Uh... Um, I just want to plug um, the, the 45plus3.com website. <laughs> Um, really taking off at the moment, you know, Harry putting in some real work to, to get them graphics up, um, some great journalism on there from Tears and Jacob. Unfortunately, haven't put my pen to paper yet other than the Brentford game. Um, but, yeah, I That's mean, awesome, I'm, a, I'm a bad omen. I'm a bad omen. Um, but, yeah, uh, over to Harry for his final exit. Let's hope he doesn't throw up in the meantime. Here we go, guys. Oh, oh, here we here we are, guys. Just me and you on the mic. What, a, what an honour. Uh, I don't. Yeah, maybe the Instagram forty five plus three. I'm doing a bit of grinding on there. I hope you like the uh, connection with added time that I did in that name, because obviously it's forty five plus three minutes. <laughs> so yeah, no, not much to plug. As as you say, watch out for the YouTube. I uploaded a Kai Havertz video. I'm not sure if many of you saw it on the YouTube channel. Maybe more more stuff like that for me when I'm back in uni and more more settled and got a lot of spare time I may be doing daily news videos so yeah c- keep an eye on that as Tia said and Man United let's see what they can do for us as all our other in-depth teams can let's see what they produce next season uh, back to Tia it's just around you all off yeah again just want to say thanks for listening uh stay with us for the season predictions <laughs> expect fireworks in those of course with my controversial opinions and uh yeah just keep posted on the added time thank you for listening guys goodbye